So hey guys, I'm out camping. I'm in a place called Sandbanks Park in Ontario. Um, I'm going to be doing a part two of the Peplink review. Um, in this video, I am testing reception, the antennas. Okay, so this is my camping setup. Uh, I have my power supply. I have my caffeine. I have my phone, and this is currently tethered to my laptop. So sorry, the laptop's tethered to the phone, which is running on either wind or, or bell internet here. It says LTE, but yeah, no. Um, MacBook decided to die, my M1. The screen won't turn on. Tried all the options on Google. So to do this video, I went out and bought a monitor at the local Canadian Tire. Yeah, I luckily had an HDMI adapter. Um, anyways, that's why I have a laptop and a giant monitor. I'm trying to go to speed test, but um, it is not connecting or at least after five minutes of waiting, I only got the HTML, not the actual page itself. And any speed test is not gonna work. Trying to update Twitter is uh, hidden miss, often doesn't update. And I only get updates from Discord every like 20 minutes or so. So I can say that my Pixel 4a has virtually non-existent connectivity. It's enough for SMS. And if you're really desperate, maybe an email or two a day. Perfect for camping. But now I'm going to um, go through, set up this guy. Ooh, look, it just loaded, loading. Okay, we'll see what happens. Um, if this loads, I'll do a speed test. Otherwise, I'm going to start setting this guy up. Um, I have antennas, I have two SIM cards with roaming, uh, national coverage, and I'll get this a go. Okay, so I have all the uh, antennas set up. Uh, there is a screw for the SIM card, and it's not a flathead, so it's a little hard to undo in the middle of nowhere. Um, I need to figure that one out before I can put the SIM cards in. So I looked around and I found a Swiss Army knife at the local camp store. Um, I got the back off, thankfully. I got my two SIM cards in now. Uh, one is for Rogers roaming and the other one is for Bell Mo Mobility. Those are the two main carriers in Canada. Uh, there's four SIM card slots, but you only can use two at a time. So I'm using 1A and 2B. I would uh, advise anyone who buys this one is to replace the screw with a thumb screw so you can replace it in the field without needing to get one of these uh, screwdrivers. Anyways, uh, we can see that we have a dashboard now. Uh, on the back of this device, it says the IP address of the, of the device. We also have the um, default Wi-Fi network. So without even doing further setup, first time connecting this device, you can uh, get to the admin dashboard with the IP address, which is 50.1, you provide password, Wi-Fi access point, and you're in. It'll make you change the uh, passwords on login. So I've changed those from the default. Um, I don't quite yet know why I'm not getting much information. Just um, some reception information. And yeah, um, I'm going to try to figure out how to get these devices to actually connect to the internet. Well, I got Bell Canada to connect. Um, you can see a good single strength of negative 79 right now. And if we go 
down. I had an auto before and it got the wrong one. It was inet.bell. I changed it to pda.bell and hit custom. And it got it right. So I finally did get my second SIM card to connect. Uh, I have it on Freedom Mobile. That's the SIM card. I had it on roaming. Previously it was connecting to Rogers, but it wasn't actually working. Um, somehow switched over to Bell Mobility. So I now have Bell and Wind Freedom Mobile roaming on Bell. And yet, funny enough, we have different signal strengths. So we have a little bit better on the uh, roaming. LTE band 17, negative 77 dB. And on the actual Bell SIM card, we have a different band. We have uh, band 4, and we have negative 88 dB. Okay, so here is the in-control dashboard. So this is the web interface for controlling uh, the VPN, also for controlling the individual devices, you can make an organization. Um, and we'll see that we have different devices in a second. So I have the uh, Transit and the BR2, which are the two PEPLINK devices. I don't have the Transit plugged in, but uh, I am using the BR2, which is the 5G one at the moment. We also bring it in here. We have uh, also our VPN, so this is the future Fusion Hub. Okay, and it shows us our two connections. Neat, uh, and our APN settings. Usage, megabits per second, da 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 da. Okay, so we are going to click on the Max BR just to give you an idea. Again, how this opens up the web dashboard. When you first set up the, the, the BR2 or these PEPLINK devices, you can connect at 192.168.1.50 to access this. But, when, but once you connect the device to your in-control uh, dashboard, you can no longer... Well, uh, you access it through the web portal instead of locally. Uh, so like this is an example of the the web portal to access the device. And here's the, uh, like the God view of all the devices and all the uh, services. So I've already set up uh, my PepLink VPN service in the cloud. This is the bonding uh, service. So you can essentially combine multiple internet connections. Uh, PepLink does provide their own service. I don't really intend to use it. I wanted to use Google Cloud, uh, use something that's local to me. So this is hosted in Toronto on either AWS or, or Google Cloud would be my preference, but I chose uh, Google because historically it tended to have better network uh, connectivity than even AWS. I have it running on a, like, this is like three and a half gigabyte RAM, one core. So not too expensive, 20, 30 bucks a month, I think. Uh, so you don't need much to run the PepLink service. PepLink has information on how to deploy. They have images for Google Cloud, AWS, things like that. Um, so you can follow the instructions there. It's, it wasn't too hard to set up, but I got it working pretty quick. Um, you know, setting it up, I can start and stop this when I need it, so I don't need to waste money. A lot of the costs will be bandwidth, not just CPU, but uh, depends on which you use the service, so I just start and stop it when I don't need it. And I set up uh, this previously for my Transit, the uh, other PepLink device. I think... I don't know what the licensing is. I think I have one license, but I, I, I might be able to try and see what happens. So I'm gonna try setting up the BR2 now. I have discovered in my first week of playing around this software to stick to the defaults. 
Um, I'm going to get rid of the internal IP address of Google Cloud. That's not a public IP address, so we'll just stick with the public one. It says private IP addresses may not be reachable, so I'll just make sure there's none. Uh, there is an advanced option here, but we don't need to worry. Uh, I'm going to select my BR2. And next. Oh, now this is the fun stuff. I'm going to call it BR2. Um, again, I'm not going to deviate from the settings I'll leave encryption on. Uh, I'll leave net mode off. I'll leave all that off, all that off, all that off. There's a lot of fun stuff that we can play in here, like forward error correction. Uh, so if we have a lot of packet loss on our Wi-Fi connection, we can enable this. Or if we're on really bad residential DSL, again, we could try to enable that. WAN smoothing is awesome, right? It's going to send more data uh, to make up for lost packets, whatever. We get into more advanced settings. Look at all this, like, wow. Um, the receive buffer, that's something that is really interesting to me. Uh, up for a bandwidth limit, if you have a, a data cap, Video Ninja can suck up a lot of bandwidth, especially on 5G, so you might want to limit that there. Again, I'm not gonna touch anything, I'm gonna leave everything as default. I plugged in the GPS. There's a cable that goes in the back here. And on the web interface for the device, we have my location. So we have New York underneath me, Toronto here. I'm just uh, east of Toronto. You can see me. I am going to be doing a speed test. Um, it's important to see that we have fairly low bit rate which this should be around 2,500. Our buffer delay is jumping up and down quite a bit. Um, that's not unreasonable for cellular, but it's not great. And our packet loss is spiking up and down. So this is the... Um, this is the raw. This is what we should be getting. Um, and this is reality. Okay, uh, we're having some problems. Again, this is with the default settings. I'm in a campsite that has very bad reception. I could not even run a speed test on my Pixel phone earlier. So um, it's still an improvement, but we're gonna go in and configure Peplink to do even better. Okay. For this, I've set the buffer delay for, to 200 milliseconds. Everything else, I'll set this to um, send all traffic as well. Setting up some Google DNS server since we're on Google. Everything else will be left the same. So, you know, instead of having 20 to 70 milliseconds of buffer, we're now seeing the browser have a pretty stable 170 or so milliseconds worth. And the video, although it has a higher buffer delay, is very smooth. Time is eight. 25, so uh, this is all within a few minutes of the previous test. I don't quite know, but we went from unusable to usable. Look, smooth. So I guess that's um, something I'll dig more into and do more testing, but I am, you know, camping out in the woods right now. Uh, where most people don't even get reception on their phone, let alone uh, streaming video. If you choose to do RTMP, you could probably increase this bitrate up. So let's actually try that. Let's go to speed test. 
Let's do a, a speed test. And as you can see, the IP address is the IP address of our VPN server. So we know that we are going through Google Cloud. This is not, uh, sorry, that we're actually going through the Peplink VPN software. And yeah, ping, ping hasn't been too high, 80 milliseconds. So despite having that buffer set to 200, we're still getting a really good ping. Okay, so I'm doing another speed test, this time with just one SIM card in the pep link, which is here. Uh, so one SIM card. I just want to... Uh, just want to see the difference. Cool. And then I'll do a video and just speed test. Okay, so this is a speed test. This one only has one SIM card in it. All right, so this is the buffer 200. But I've been noticing with one SIM card. I've been getting some spikes for packet loss. Uh, I might be able to compensate for that with an even higher buffer, but I think having multiple SIM cards would help reduce that uh, problem where the video kind of just flops. <sighs> I need to do more testing. I keep saying I'm going to go to bed and uh, I keep having new ideas for tests. So maybe, maybe bed now.